Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna paint this beautiful lily in oil pastel. And if you'd like a real-time version of this, you can find it up in Critique Club. I'll put a link in the video description if you're interested in that. We're gonna start off on pastel matte paper. Now, please feel free to use whatever you have on whatever paper you have and follow along. But I'm gonna use pastel matte because um, I'm just curious to see how it'll work out. Now, I'm using a chalk pastel pencil to sketch on my design. Now, I will warn you, if you're working on pastel matte, Matt, it is advised to draw on a separate piece of paper and then use transfer paper to bring your drawing over because this is not a very forgiving paper for erasing. But um, I figured with uh, with a flower, I'd be safe just sketching it on. I draw a lot of flowers. Um, but that's not to say that I couldn't have drawn it better on scrap paper and then transferred it over. That would have been the recommended procedure, but a lot of times I just I just like to draw right on my surface and, and get cracking, you know what I mean? Now I am taping down the edges of my paper, not because I have to, but this is gonna keep my tabletop clean because I won't be smudging off to the edge, and it will also give me a place where I can handle the paper and not disturb this oil pastel. Now oil pastel kind of feels like, um, like a lipstick, it's kind of creamy, so it's not uh, a chalky feeling or a dusty feeling like a soft pastel is. However, if you want to do this project in soft pastel, I think it would translate pretty well. Now just look at the rich colors that I'm able to get on this pastel matte paper with the oil pastels. It really um, makes it easy to lay down color. I want you to be aware though that this, um, although it's not a sanded paper, it does have a, a quite a unique texture to it that really grabs the pastel and really gives you those vivid colors, but it also wears down the pastel a little bit quicker. Now what I found I really liked on this paper was the really inexpensive Pentel oil pastels. Now you can get a set of 50 of those for under $10 on uh, Blick or probably even Amazon. Um, prices are cheaper on Blick for these, but uh, very, very affordable pastels. They are small, but, um, but they're mighty, I have to say. Now I've had this set for a few years. I really like it. I have heard though from people who've purchased this set recently that there is a very strong uh, petroleum odor from it. So I guess they reformulated in 2019 and um, and I guess the pastels kind of stink now. So um, so just be aware, be aware of that if you plan on purchasing these that uh, if it's a newer version or a newer stock, it may have an odor to it and, and quite a strong one from what I hear. So I don't want anyone to be um, to be surprised or disappointed. Now the other pastels I was using that are in that box to my right, those are the Paul Rubens pastel set of 48. Um, that's your basic colors. I haven't tried the iridescent or the pastel tones, but I really like the basic color set and there's pigment information on all on each stick, which is really nice because I don't always trust light fastness information from manufacturers if they're not one of the, you know, big major brands that I've used for, you know, decades. So I having the pigment numbers really helps me because I know that I can trust. I know certain pigments. I know that's a safe one or that's a fugitive one. And it just um, can help me determine whether the color is going to be light fast or not. So uh, that I get give points to uh, to Paul Rubens for that. Um, the Mungio pastels available on Amazon are also really good. Mungio makes pastels for a lot of companies. They make the Master's Touch uh, soft, premium soft oil pastels for Hobby Lobby if you have those or if you have access to that store. I know we all have access to different products and different stores in different parts of the world, so uh, hopefully that's helpful. Mungio is a Korean company, but they are available worldwide as far as I as far as I know, you can buy them on like Amazon or AliExpress or, you know, different marketplaces like that. They're, they they make decent stuff and very affordable stuff. I won't say it's top of the line, but I would say it is, you know, it is, oh, I would say kind of in between student grade and artist grade. Very good stuff for the price for sure. Now I'm using a combination. I actually, on this paper, really loved the firmer Pentel oil pastels. So if you have a few pastels and you notice some are a little bit firmer and maybe they don't give up enough pigment on other smoother papers, give them a try on this pastel mat or other sanded paper because you may be surprised. Now another tip I want to give you, say you want to try out sanded paper but you don't want to uh, maybe you just want to play around with it and you don't want the expense, you can go to a hardware store and buy 400 grit sandpaper, or between 400 and 800, kind of feel it. You don't want something super gritty. You want something, uh, but you need something with a little bit of tooth, so between four and 800 should be good. And that's also a great way if you want to let, um, you know, your kids play with the uh, the medium a bit and you don't want to spend, um, you know, dollars for a sheet of paper that might be, um, 
you know, might might not be something that you want to keep forever. Now, sandpaper from the hardware store is bound to be acidic because of the adhesives that they use, but it definitely will give you the feel and you can practice and uh, for, for very little money. You can even buy sandpaper at discount stores. So, um, so definitely worth giving it a try if, you know, as long as you're not making something you want to last decades, you just want to like experiment with it. Now you probably saw me grab my colored pencils. I really like to use the colored pencils with my oil pastels and I prefer to use my softer pencils. So like I would recommend using either the Prismacolor Premier or the Derwent Color Soft or the, um, the Derwent Chroma Flow. Any of your softer color pencils are going to work really well with that. Now these tools here, I have a variety. These are silk tipped tools. You can purchase a pack of five in the stamping aisle at your big box store for around $10, so it's a pretty good deal. They're quite expensive if you buy the ones that are meant for painters and artists, um, or fine artists rather, so I would definitely recommend checking out the stamping aisle. You have more variety if you're uh, shopping the artist brands, uh, like a uh, Color Shaper, I think is the brand that makes them, um, and they're great, but you're gonna pay a lot more for them. Um, but the other steal of a deal is to go on like Amazon and look in the nail art section. Um, if you if you search nail, silicone tipped nail art tools, you can get some really great ones and you're not gonna beat the price. So that's what I would recommend. And plus they're kind of cute. They've got like, the ones that I have have little glittery gems in the handle and they're double tipped. So I get two tools on one, uh, one handle, which is really handy. So I'm going in with my color pencils to kind of define edges and add details. It works really well on this paper because it's so gritty, I can still lay down uh, the, the color pencil over the pastel. Now I've been able to do that over the Sennelier pastels, oddly enough, they're my softest pastels, and I've been able to add colored pencil details on top of those pastels. I have no idea why that works because you would think the softer the pastel, the more slippery and the less likely you are to be able to lay down colored pencil over them. But for whatever reason, whatever magic is in those Sennelier pastels, I can do that on regular paper. But um, but on this paper, you can, you can use any pastels and you probably could use any colored pencils on top, really. You probably don't even need the softest, but I, I've always just used the soft ones with the oil pastels because nothing else will stick. Anything harder just scrapes the pastel away. So I'm building up my colors. Uh, you want to be careful not to get, uh, and this is something that you can find yourself in, a predicament you can find yourself in on any paper. Uh, not, it's, it's a little harder to do this on the pastel paper, which is good. You, you have that little bit of an extra tooth there. But sometimes you can end up with so much pastel on your surface that it just feels like you're sliding around in an oil slick. You know, you're just, I call it being in the grease. You just can't define anything. You're just, you're just slipping and sliding and you can't, you know, lay down the colors that you want. Um, so you're much less likely to have that issue if you're on a, a toothy paper like this because it can take so much more media. So what I would recommend, if you get in that predicament and you're on regular paper, maybe you're working on drawing paper or watercolor paper or you're in a sketchbook, if you save your old credit cards or old gift cards, and cut them up, and now you've seen me use those in watercolors before, but they're actually excellent for this too. You can scrape back to the paper and be able to lay down more pigment. And I like that method versus using a palette knife or a um, an X-Acto knife because you have the, the you have more of a chance of damaging your paper if you're gonna go in there with, um, with a metal tool. Those gift cards, cut up gift cards, are just gonna work so much better for that. Uh, it gets the job done and you don't risk damaging your paper, which I love. Now I like that um, you can go in, if you have a background on your piece, and I recommend doing your backgrounds first and just slightly overlapping where your um, focal point's going to be. But the nice thing about having a background versus just having the color of your paper as the background is that you can go in and clean up your edges really easily. Oil pastel is gonna be difficult to erase, so. So being able to go in there with like a little blue and, and sharpen up an edge around the flower is really helpful. Now that thing I'm using right there on my finger, that is a silicone tip tool that's meant for like if you're using uh, hot medias like uh, maybe you're using hot glue guns or things like that to protect your fingers. You can get those at the Dollar Tree. Um, they're just little silicone finger cots basically and you can use that to blend out big areas you know, and then not have to get pastel all over your fingers which is kind of handy. So it's like a super duper big silicone tip tool. Um, 
And I think I've seen those at every single Dollar Tree I've been to in the new craft aisle. So check it out if you're looking for something like that. Plus I do like it when I'm doing hot glue crafts, especially like building boxes and things because I'll get inevitably, if I'm using hot, hot glue and foam core to build something, I'll get a big slurp of glue over the edge. And so I can just take that finger tool and just slide my finger right across it and wipe it off. So if they're just a really great tool to have for both blending pastels and also keeping your fingers from getting scalded from a hot glue gun. So don't burn your hands off, get those silicone tips things so you can get through for a dollar it's a it's a baggin real baggin um i'm going in with some highlights with my white prismacolor pencil and even if you don't have any intention in getting an, any prismacolor pencils i still would recommend getting the white because it works so well for highlighting other brands as well it's just a wonderful wonderful product um can be a little break it's probably the most breaky prismacolor color though i will warn you there it can be a little frustrating um so if that really bugs you, I would say go with the Derwent Chinese White Drawing, the Derwent Drawing line. They have a nice uh, soft white pencil, not quite as soft as Prismacolor, but it's pretty soft and it doesn't have the breakage problems. But um, I guess I'm just, I'm so used to using the Prismacolors that I don't even, it doesn't even irk me anymore. So I'm doing some more blending with that, uh, that finger tool. I was struggling here because I didn't feel like I was getting that trumpety shape of the flower. And there, this is where I curse my, Plus not like taking not taking enough time on the drawing stage. That's it gets me every time. I'm so excited to paint. I'm so excited to use my pastels um, that I kind of think, well, any any errors in my drawing, I'll just fix in the painting stage. It's so much better if you get those errors uh, worked out in the drawing stage and in drawing on scrap paper so you don't have to worry about erasing or making mistakes instead of just trying to draw perfect on your good paper because you might just let a, a mistake slide so you don't want to try to erase and mar the surface. Uh, so there, you know, do I give you that tip every sketchbook Sunday? I think I do. When am I gonna take my own advice? I don't know, probably never because I'm so stubborn. <laughs> I just want to jump in there and start painting. Um, and uh, and I'm also using the silicone tip tools to smoosh the smoosh and blend the pigment around. And I'm going in with another coat of the white pastel to just brighten up some areas. Now, one thing I another thing I like about that Paul Rubin set of pastels, and I'll try to remember to link everything up down below in the video description. Um, I like that they offer. I think they have like. Uh, like three or four white pastel sticks in the set of 48. So, you know, you may like that, you may not. You might not like that, that you know, that there are four duplicate colors, but man, you are gonna go through the white. It's so nice to have additional whites. They do sell a set of just like six white sticks if you just need some extra whites, which is nice. But I love that that starter set, kind of has everything you need. And um, I think you could definitely get started off with that Paul Rubin set and, um, pretty much do whatever you want to do and not have um, and not really be wanting for much. So I'm in here putting in some more details with my color pencils. I'm using kind of like a or like a raspberry red. I'm using some white. I'm just trying to get the like the little crinkles and veins in the in the uh, the petals and just try to get that kind of uh, the shape, the form, the movement of like those the um, the veins in the flower kind of coming out of the center and getting that kind of trumpety shape. I hope that makes sense. I know it's kind of weird that there's a couple, the two petals in the front are slightly foreshortened. Um, and I think, and, and it's making the whole flower look stiff. I don't feel like I, it really has an expressive like softness to it. I think that's what, but what's bugging me. I just felt like this was very stiff the whole time that I was, that I was painting it. I did like it a little bit better. Um, when I came back to it, later but I, I was I was getting a little frustrated with it and I find that happens to me when I'm so excited when I begin and the, like the background's going really good and I love it and then like I then it, then I have these huge expectations in my head and of course it doesn't you know you don't keep that same heightened um, excitement throughout the piece so what I'm using right here is an oil-based paint pen. And um, this is the Arteza brand. Any brand is gonna be fine. They're all very similar. Uh, but I'm using this because I just, I'm so in the grease right now, I cannot get anything else to stick and I can't get any details. So by using an oil-based paint marker, it's got the same underlying um, medium, so it's gonna be compatible. It's not gonna crack or chip. It shouldn't crack or chip. I mean, oil pastel work should be matted and framed under glass because you're, you're looking at a work on paper and oil pastels never dry. They're, they're, um, 
they are what they are. They use non-drying oils. So even though the oil might dry out in the environment a bit, it's still like an active surface, I call it, when like a, a painting could still be smushed or smudged or, or smeared. Uh, so I'm just going in with this. I am adding little touches of highlight. You have to keep scribbling off your pen though. That's what I'm doing on the tape borders because it does pick up the oil, the oil pastel and it can clog the tip. So just make sure you scribble off those markers on a scrap of paper before you cap them and put them away so they don't clog the tip. But um, I thought this was this was nice because it helped me get that little bit of detail that I needed. So this really is a mixed media piece um, with the addition of colored pencils and markers. Um, just make sure you use the right medium. So if you were doing this, um, I wouldn't use markers over soft pastels, but if you're using your oil pastels, make sure it's an oil-based marker. An acrylic-based marker is gonna crackle right on that surface because it's just, it, and it probably won't even stick. It'll probably just beat up and be kind of miserable to work with. Um, and if you're working on regular paper doing a water-based project, uh, you know, a lot of times you can use oil-based over it if you're going over acrylic, but if you're on like watercolor paper and you just have watercolor, I would not use an oil-based pen on that because it could um, damage the paper underneath if it hasn't been gessoed or have acrylic paint on it. So just make sure whatever marker you're using is going to be compatible and is going to bond with what you have underneath so that way you don't have archivability issues if it turns out you absolutely love your painting and you want it to last a long time. Um, and also in a sketchbook, I think it is, I mean, it's up to you whether you want to worry about archivability in a sketchbook, but since a sketchbook is not protected under glass, it's going to be handled, it's going to be flipped through any of those highlights, you know, using a gel pen for a highlight, for instance, or a color pencil, you're more likely to chip it or scratch it off in a sketchbook because it gets so much more action as it's flipped through. Now it might not be precious and you might not care, but, um, there are products you can use, in a sketchbook that will bond to your colored pencil, for instance. So um, you can learn more about that if you, that concerns you. And um, if not, then, you know, go on your merry way and do whatever you want. But I just figured, I feel like it's my um, duty as an instructor, even on YouTube, to inform you of that. And of course, you know, in my classes and whatnot. So that kind of bugged me. See that little bud there that's kind of peeking out behind the lily? It bugged me that it didn't peek out enough. There was like just a little bump and it didn't look, when you're gonna make something kind of come out from behind something else, you really wanna make it be a little bit substantial. You don't want it lining up evenly because our brains don't like that. It kind of bugs us. So I made sure I bumped that tip of that bud out a little bit so it would um, it would look a little bit better. So I just wanted to clarify why I did that because sometimes Sometimes um, you just wouldn't know. You wouldn't think to, I wonder why she did that and just kind of, um, you just wouldn't know. So I, I do like to, to explain there. And now that the purple pen that I used on the flower wasn't quite the right shade, but since I put that, put that paint pen down and it dries fairly quickly, I knew I could go over it with oil pastel. So that's what I did with that more um, raspberry-ish burgundy color. It's more what I need. And that purple marker gave me enough tooth back that I could do that. So uh, that worked out well. And those little pencils there, they look like eyeliners. Those are the Jane Davenport drama sticks and they actually really feel like a soft eyeliner. They're not my favorite product, but for this particular instance, they worked quite well. I just, they kind of break and they're really soft and they're a little finicky but um, it worked really well for this. So if you happen to have those in your stash, I think they're discontinued, uh, but that could really help you out as far as getting those details because you don't want to sharpen one of those oil pastels and waste so much material, you know what I mean? That's why I like to use things like colored pencils or markers, things like that that I can, um, that I can use for the details so I don't waste those big chunks of, uh, of beautiful pigment. You know, it's basically pigment and, and wax and oil and, you know, it's all good usable stuff. You hate to, you hate to, you know, sharpen it and waste it and lose it, right? Um, so I'm putting in some little dots of pollen with a paint pen and um, I did kind of put the dots of pollen down with the paint pen and then tap it out with my finger because it just was too gaudy on its own. And now we're done. I'm taking the tape off and there you can see the finished painting. I hope you enjoyed this project today. I had a lot of fun painting it even though I was frustrated at times. I really enjoyed working with oil pastels on pastel mat. If you'd like a real-time version of this, please check out Critique Club. It's $5 a month and you have access to, well, I don't know, 54 tutorials now plus you can upload your work for feedback from me if you want a little help to grow as an artist it's a great community and we'd love to have you if you are interested in those extra tutorials and growing as an artist yourself I also wanted to let you know that my soft pastels for beginner course is on sale for 50% off through the month of April over at my teachable school and I will put a link to that in the video description as well if you're interested thanks for watching until next time happy crafting